Team colleagues Haruhiko Ichijo and Mai Kawakami pursue a blaze specter wreaking havoc at the upper education segment of their esteemed private institution, Hosea Academy. However, their overseer, Arisu Himeno, who manages the Phantom Hunting Club in the Neural Error Corrections Room, seizes their compensation due to the damage caused to the high school timepiece sculpture. While strolling through a graveyard, Haruhiko observes Reina Aizumi utilizing her unique skill to consume burial specters. Intrigued by this, Haruhiko endeavors to enlist Reina into his group in the Phantom Hunting Club, though she initially declines. Following a meal in the high school dining area, Haruhiko explains that the Aleyashiki Company's research center was struck by a terrorist explosion more than a decade ago, unleashing a virus that contaminated the human brain. This resulted in alterations in brain functionality, enabling everyone to perceive specters, encompassing ghosts, yokai, monsters, and other supernatural entities. Furthermore, post-incident offspring were bestowed with specialized capabilities genetically crafted to combat specters. Individuals possessing these extraordinary abilities established club-like associations within their educational institutions to seal and eradicate troublesome specters for a reward. Following Haruhiko's introduction of Reina to Mai, the trio embarks on a mission to address wooden utility pole specters known as Tsukimogamis, causing disruptions in radio signals. Reina effectively seals the Tsukimogamis after Mai competes with them in a classic limbo game. Haruhiko aspires to enhance his team contribution by mastering the art of invoking specters with his sketchbook. Arisu assigns Haruhiko, Mai, and Reina to aid Koido Minase, a recently transferred student who first exhibited her unique ability through her singing voice in her early years. Their mission takes them to the deserted factory of the Oleashiki Company, where reports indicate a security robot specter causing disruption by manipulating drones. As the security robot specter deploys antiphase sound waves to neutralize Koido's singing voice, Haruhiko, Mai, Reina, and Koido collaborate to seal the security robot specter. Following a cooldown session at Haruhiko's residence with Mai, and Reina, Haruhiko's fairy specter named Ruru discloses discovering an enigmatic device at the abandoned factory. The subsequent day, Haruhiko enlightens Mai and Reina about a parole, an exclusive incantation employed by those with special abilities. Arisu promptly assigns the trio to confront an unusual UFO specter spying on college girls in their dormitory. While Mai and Reina entice the UFO specter by donning towels, Haruhiko eventually employs his parole by conjuring a sketch of Marchoja's using a cut on his finger. Despite Marchoja's resembling a winged puppy, it successfully captures the UFO specter, allowing Reina to seal it. Reina mends Haruhiko's cut finger with her mouth. Passing by, Koido remains unimpressed with Haruhiko, Mai, and Reina's handling of the task. Haruhiko, Mai, and Reina rendezvous at the train station, where Mai reminisces about her introverted childhood. Their mission is to confront two female overpass specters who challenge individuals to a strength competition. The overpass specters specifically target Mai, and despite a quick defeat, Haruhiko summons Marchojas as a diversion for a strategic withdrawal. The following day, Mai endeavors to train Haruhiko, and Reina in combat. Haruhiko proposes the idea of copying Mai's semantic memory, episodic memory, and procedural memory into his brain without the need for combat training. With Arisu's assistance, Haruhiko and Mai visit various locations like an amusement park, a movie theater, and a climbing gym to synchronize shared memories, although Reina expresses envy. Returning to the overpass, Haruhiko and Mai are challenged to a duel by the Overpass Spectres. Through the synchronization of shared memories, Haruhiko discovers that the Overpass Spectres are actually two girls whom Mai befriended during her preschool field trip a decade ago. Believing that Mai was more outgoing than introverted, Haruhiko deduces that Mai altered her memories. Lacking the stamina for physical combat, Arisu suggests Haruhiko implement Mai's special ability. Haruhiko and Mai execute a simultaneous attack using Mai's five-element special ability against the Overpass Spectres, who finally disappear after acknowledging defeat. The next day, Arisu suspects that Mai's memories will fade from Haruhiko's brain within a few days, while Reina contemplates whether she will ever grow closer to Haruhiko and Mai. Haruhiko, Mai, and Reina visit a buffet-style restaurant, where Reina showcases her substantial appetite. At sundown, Reina boards a mysterious crimson bus on her journey home. The subsequent day, Koido verifies that the crimson bus is, in fact, a phantom-possessed bus that has taken control of Reina. At the ensuing sunset, Mai and Koido observe as Haruhiko, and Reina embark on the phantom-occupied bus before it vanishes. Haruhiko and Reina find themselves in an otherworldly abode, where Reina is captivated by two spectral rabbits assuming the roles of her impeccable parents at the dining table, with Haruhiko portrayed as Reina's elder sibling. Awakening outside Reina's residence, they realize that almost no time has elapsed since boarding the Crimson Bus. The next day, Koido explains that the bus phantom mesmerizes victims using food and seizes control of their consciousness. Reina discloses that her elder sister fled home because her stern parents loathe phantoms. Come the following sunset, 
Haruhiko, Mai, and Reina embark on the bus phantom once more, finding themselves in the same fantastical residence. This time, Mai is perceived as Reina's elder sister. Seeking refuge in the bathroom as a means to break the trance, Haruhiko assists Reina in regaining her senses. Although nearly swayed by the spectral rabbits offering her a permanent stay in the illusionary abode, Reina opts to abandon it when Haruhiko discloses that he still awaits his mother's return. The subsequent day, Haruhiko and Mai discover that Reina came clean to her parents and obtained approval to remain in the Phantom Hunting Club. Koido employs her unique capability to bind a phantom haunting the railway. She mentions keeping her distance from others since her extraordinary talent emerged four years ago. During lunch, Haruhiko's comrade Shosuke Morohashi remarks that Koido seems aloof despite her past popularity. Arisu assigns Koido the task of handling a dragon phantom causing chaos in the school's poultry and rabbit enclosures. At the primary school division of Hosea Academy, while encountering Korume Kuma Makora, Koido faces the dragon phantom, rendering her specialized ability ineffective. Just as Haruhiko, Mai, and Reina arrive to assist, Korumi activates her skill, transforming her lifeless teddy bear Albrecht into a living, combative giant, prompting the dragon phantom to retreat. Arisu proposes a competition to determine who can apprehend the dragon phantom first. Lai, Reina, and Korumi unite as a team while Haruhiko and Koido reluctantly form another. Although Haruhiko and Koido are the first to locate and confront the dragon phantom, it escapes once more. Arisu later informs Haruhiko that the dragon phantom triggered Koido's special ability four years ago. Standing resolutely against the dragon phantom at the zoo, Koido is ultimately rescued by the timely arrival of Haruhiko, Mai, Reina, and Korumi. Together, they combine their unique abilities to seal the dragon phantom, with Reina tending to Koido's injuries. Arisu discloses that the dragon phantom is distinct from the one Koido encountered four years prior. Back at Haruhiko's residence, he endeavors to repair the enigmatic device, and Koido waits outside to express her gratitude and apologies before swiftly departing. Korumi harbors a fear of letting down those who depend on her, and would rather steer clear of engaging in battles against phantoms. While crossing a street, Korumi crosses paths with Haruhiko, and suddenly they find themselves transported to an enchanting realm populated by sentient teddy bears. In this realm, Korumi is hailed as their missing princess, with Albrecht assuming the role of her royal protector, defending her against the Higuman teddy bear soldiers in allegiance to the malevolent Prince Salmon de Higuman. Within Salmon's lair, Albrecht informs Haruhiko, and Korumi of Salmon's intention to wed Korumi after usurping the throne. Albrecht departs after returning a golden rake to Korumi, identified as her family heirloom. Haruhiko deduces that they are stranded in an alternate world constructed from Korumi's memories, centered around bears, encompassing the animal itself, her favorite food, birthplace, and surname. Albrecht reappears to report that Salmon is plotting an attack with his vanguard. Simultaneously, in the Neural Error Corrections room, Koido informs Mai and Reina that Korumi is capable of combat but needs to overcome her mental hurdles. Following Albrecht being struck by an arrow, Haruhiko and Korumi transport him to the forest, where Korumi recollects how Albrecht instilled in her the confidence to forge new friendships. When Salmon launches an assault with a colossal robotic teddy bear, Korumi conquers her apprehensions and faces Salmon alone. Activating the Golden Rake, Korumi transforms into a magical girl, effortlessly vanquishing Salmon. Subsequently, Haruhiko and Korumi depart the Fantasy Kingdom, returning to the crosswalk in the real world. Back at the Neural Error Corrections room, Mai invites Korumi to join them in dealing with a phantom, and Korumi joyfully agrees to lend her assistance. In the high school, the students inadvertently adopt feline behaviors, characterized by prolonged naps and cravings for fish. Mai explains that a nearby mansion, originally a dormitory, was shut down due to an infestation of stray cats. Korumi implores Haruhiko, Mai, and Reina to locate a missing kitten named Rudolph for her friend Arita. The following day, to Haruhiko's astonishment, students, including Mai, Reina, Koido, and even Korumi, arrive at the high school sporting cat ears and tails. The group explores the cat mansion, eventually realizing that they are inside a phantom known as the cat mansion. However, both Koido and Mai are unsuccessful in sealing the cat mansion phantom. Through Korumi's appeal, the cat mansion phantom returns Rudolph, restores the mansion, and reverts all the students to their normal state. Korumi discloses that the Cat Mansion Phantom felt lonely when the mansion was closed, and the stray cats dispersed. Before departing, Haruhiko, Mai, Reina, Koido, and Korumi tidy up the Cat Mansion. Arisu arrives to declare that the mansion will be transformed into a tea house for the students. Amidst the scorching heat, the high school premises undergo a transformation into a thermal spring presided over by a mature male simian specter. Numerous students, including Shosuke, the coastal seraphs, Mai, Haruhiko, Korumi, and Koido, all fall short in their attempts to seal the simian specter. Haruhiko and Mai opt for a disguise, donning a pantomime horse ensemble and approaching the thermal spring, where their cover is swiftly exposed. Subsequently, 
Haruhiko proposes a plan for Reina, Koromi, and Koido to showcase their one-piece swimsuits to entice the Simeon Spectre out of the thermal spring. However, the Simeon Spectre remains unimpressed, deeming the trio unattractive. As a last-ditch effort, Haruhiko resorts to painting Mai in red to capture the attention of the Simeon Spectre. Unfortunately, Mai accidentally spills red paint on Haruhiko's sketchbook, hindering his ability to complete his artwork. Instead, Haruhiko calls upon Cthulhu, manifesting as a colossal baby octopus, to apprehend the Simeon Spectre, allowing Koido to bind it. Ruru discovers that the Simeon Spectre was abandoned by its mate, and sought solace in the thermal spring. In an attempt to uplift the Simeon Spectre's spirits, a mock wedding is organized, with Haruhiko reluctantly playing the role of the bride. As the Simeon Spectre departs from the high school with a hesitant Haruhiko, the thermal spring vanishes. Ayumi Kitajima, the solitary member of the Dramatic Society, eventually persuades Haruhiko, Mai, Reina, Ruru, Koido, and Koromi to partake in the interregional contest for her play loosely modeled on the Aikdea incident. Haruhiko, Reina, Ruru, and Mai assume the roles of Toshizo Hijikata, Soji Akita, Isami Kondo, and the Hostage of the Phantom, respectively, while Koromi and Koido portray Ryoma Sakamoto and Aizo Akata. Ayumi assigns herself the role of the Phantom. The rehearsals prove demanding yet rewarding. On the day of the interregional competition, Haruhiko, Mai, Reina, Ruru, Koido, and Koromi commence their performance. Midway through the play, Ayumi is unveiled as a Bakimatsu phantom, born from the suppressed rage and frustration stemming from ten consecutive years of losing in the regional competition. Additionally, Ayumi had deceived others by manipulating their memories into believing she was a sophomore drama student. Instead of attempting to seal Ayumi, the group opts to complete the play. Ayumi then transforms the stage into an illusion mirroring the surroundings and interiors of the Aikdea Inn, with the audience members serving as extras. Haruhiko, Mai, Reina, Ruru, Koido, and Koromi adhere to the script, culminating in a victorious showdown against Ayumi. The stage eventually reverts to normal, securing their triumph in the interregional competition. The subsequent day, Ayumi insists that with more intensive rehearsals throughout the entire summer vacation, they can progress to the national competition. Following Haruhiko's inadvertent misstep on Ruru, she grows weary of her diminutive stature. In a park, Ruru encounters an altruistic sorceress specter whose mission is to fulfill the wishes of fellow phantoms. Eager to become human-sized, Ruru promptly expresses her desire to the witch phantom, who transforms her into a human girl named Natsuno Ramune and orchestrates her placement in Haruhiko's class as a transfer student. The caveat is that Natsuno forfeits her ability to fly, and will revert to fairy size if her true identity is exposed. Haruhiko promptly introduces Natsuno to the Phantom Hunting Club, and she spins a convincing tale of woe. Attending the fireworks festival in Yukata attire, Natsuno grapples with guilt as Haruhiko, Mai, Reina, Koido, Koromi, and Arisu all wish for Ruru's presence. Meanwhile, the witch phantom stumbles upon a discarded firework phantom, fulfilling its desire for a memorable departure. Amid the fireworks spectacle, Haruhiko tends to Natsuno's weary feet while confessing his longing for Ruru's company despite her usual mischievousness. The firework phantom crashes the festival festival, posing a threat with an imminent explosion. Despite Koido, Reina, Mai, and Koromi being unable to seal the firework phantom individually, Haruhiko finds himself tethered to the explosive entity. To restore her flight ability, Natsuno discloses her true identity as Ruru, reverting to her fairy size. Ruru persuades the firework phantom to detonate higher in the sky, freeing Haruhiko into the river. To everyone's surprise, Ruru emerges unscathed, prompting Haruhiko to admonish her for causing concern. Against the backdrop of a dazzling fireworks display, Haruhiko purchases a bottle of ramune for Ruru and extends an apology for the earlier mishap. In a particular scene, Mai shields a young boy from the menace of a Sandman phantom. A few days earlier, Ruru inquires about the childhood experiences of Haruhiko, Mai, Reina, Koido, and Koromi. During the night, Haruhiko stumbles upon a tin box filled with mementos from his youth. The subsequent morning, Haruhiko awakens in a child version of himself, devoid of memories of his teenage years. He assumes attendance at the primary school, firmly convinced that he remains in the first grade. Koromi locates Haruhiko, and escorts him to the Neural Error Corrections room. Arisu counsels Haruhiko to continue his high school classes, while Mai, albeit reluctantly, volunteers to care for him at her residence. Despite Haruhiko's politeness and intellect for a child, Mai grapples with the dual responsibilities of high school studies, phantom hunting, and tending to Haruhiko, resulting in a toll on her well-being. During the night, Mai consoles the apprehensive Haruhiko, drawing parallels between their approaches to coping with challenges on their own. The subsequent afternoon, Mai escorts Haruhiko to the playground, where her exertion nears exhaustion. Suddenly, an irate Sandman phantom emerges from a sandbox, resentful of being treated like a litter box. In the midst of trying to seal the rampant Sandman phantom, Mai collapses. Haruhiko, yearning to revert to his teenage self, vocalizes his wish, promptly transforming him back, though clad only in underwear due to outgrowing his attire. Swiftly summoning Cthulhu, 
he effortlessly vanquishes the Sandman Phantom, rescuing Mai. Horohiko changes into fresh clothes at his residence, where Mai discovers that he has no recollection of the past few days. Reading a letter authored by young Haruhiko, depicting an idyllic Sunday at the playground with his parents, Mai surmises that the letter was a mere fantasy, akin to Koromi's previous experience. At the diner, Haruhiko becomes the target of playful teasing from the girls regarding his adorable appearance as a child. With the imminent arrival of summer vacation, Haruhiko, Mai, Reina, Koido, and Koromi hold the highest academic standings among the Phantom Hunting Club teams. Koido informs Haruhiko about his ongoing efforts to mend a communication device, granting access to the Aleyashiki Company's servers. The following day, Arisu issues a warning to the students concerning an unidentified female phantom named Enigma, who recently assaulted three students from another school and absconded with their unique abilities. Subsequently, the Beach Angels fall prey to Enigma's attack, resulting in the theft of their special abilities through kisses. Haruhiko, Mai, and Koido swiftly intervene in an attempt to seal Enigma, but she eludes capture. As the Beach Angels remain devoid of their abilities, it becomes apparent that Enigma is still at large. While Haruhiko dedicates himself to repairing the communication device, a call from his mother prompts a meeting at the playground. Following a heartfelt reconciliation, Haruhiko's mother agrees to reside with him once more. A week later, Mai, Reina, Koido, and Koromi confront a sunflower phantom. After observing Haruhiko and his mother at a grocery store, Koido suggests to Mai, Reina, and Koromi that Haruhiko's mother may be a phantom. The trio visits Haruhiko's house for dinner, during which Haruhiko's mother, in a playful manner, extends her blessings for the girls to marry him. Unexpectedly, Mai receives a communication from Arisu, notifying her that Haruhiko's mother has been missing for a week. Suddenly, during the dinner, Mai falls victim to an attack by Haruhiko's possessed mother, revealing her true identity as Enigma. The girls can only watch helplessly as Enigma steals Haruhiko's special ability through a kiss before vacating the unconscious form of Haruhiko's mother. To compound the distress, both Haruhiko and Ruru simultaneously lose consciousness, leaving the girls deeply concerned. And this is all for this video, make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.